Hello everyone and welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at a procedural geometry node system in Blender 4.3 that allows you to create procedural cities and also add roads that correctly mask around the buildings, which was a requested feature in my previous version of this tutorial. Today we're going to be using some very simple cubes as the basis for the buildings, but in a part two for this, which is coming out next week or is already out depending on when you're watching this, We'll go into more detail on how to add more custom and detailed buildings but for now we're just going to be using some very simple cubes alternatively if you follow the link in the description you can download this file off of gumroad where you can just get straight into the file but either way i'd recommend watching this video just so you get a hang of what we're actually doing and how the system works all right so let's open up blender and we're actually going to use our default cube for this go into the geometry nodes panel join this panel into the left so we get a split view between the 3d panel and the geometry nodes at the bottom now let's just change the name of our cube to city, come down to our geometry nodes panel, add a new geometry nodes system and call it something crazy like city. All right, here we go. So let's delete our group input and press shift A to add a mesh primitive and a grid, which is essentially a plane. Plug that into the geometry and let's change the size of the X and Y to something like 10 meters so we get a view on what's going on. Next we're going to add a geometry and join geometry and this will just allow us to make sure that we can see the grid as well as everything else that we're adding in and nothing disappears. Next we're going to add a instance, instance on points and a point distribute points on faces node. Connect the mesh from the grid into the mesh, the points from the points and the instances into the join geometry and nothing has happened <laughs> and that's because we've got nothing to actually distribute on our plane. We need to actually give it something to generate. We could do this in the geometry nodes, but today we're going to just make our own custom cube. So let's make a new collection, call it buildings, add a mesh cube, just move it to the side and then rename it to something crazy like I don't know, building one, let's say. Cool. And let's duplicate this with shift D and move it over just so we can demonstrate how it's going to distribute different versions, different models from the same collection and just call this building two. Now, to make sure we can identify it differently, let's just press E to extrude the top face of this and E again to bring it up. And then we'll just be able to see when it's distributing on the system that there's a difference between the two cubes. Let's also go to this little tab here and change the color to random just to help us visualize everything and turn on cavity as well. This way, not everything is just a big gray mess. OK, back into our geometry node system, let's add an input scene and collection info also going to add a geometry, operations and transform geometry. Now you're going to connect the instances into geometry and geometry into our instance. On collection, make sure we select our buildings collection and this has offset everything really weirdly. So click separate children, reset children and pick instance. And this should move everything into the right place. Now if we just reduce the density, that will help us see everything a bit clearer. And you can see everything's sitting below the plane. So if we go into our transform geometry, Set the Z to one, that should boost everything up so it's always level with the plane. Okay, now if we do Shift A, I and mean, let's go and search for now instead of clicking everything manually and add a random value, change from float to vector and plug the value into scale. Now this will allow us to sort of randomly adjust how big we want our buildings to be between two different sets of numbers. So these are the values I've gone with here, just to get a bit of variation so they're not just the same size cubes. An issue I had in my last tutorial was that the buildings were intersecting. So if we change this to Poisson disk, I think I'm pronouncing that right, we can change the distance min and density max to try and ensure that the cubes are overlapping as little as possible. There's still a little bit and it's up to you how dense you want this to be. I'm going to choose something like 0.5 and I'm pretty good with that. OK, next we're going to add a random value node, shift A again, search and also add a vector math node, change it from add to snap, and let's connect value to vector and vector into rotation. This is going to allow us to basically randomize the rotation of the cubes while snapping them to 90 degree angles. So let's change the random value to vector. You might have to reconnect that again. Change the max values to 0, 0, and then 45. And on the snap value, we're going to change that to 11. Now we can't really tell what that's done because all the cubes are perfectly symmetrical but if we rotate the roof of this one building at an angle you'll see on the actual node setup that 
the buildings are randomly rotating 90 degrees and snapping into place, which is exactly what we wanted. So I'm just going to adjust this ever so slightly so it's not so extreme. And that's looking good. That's basically our main setup here. So what we want to do is box select all of this with B. And then if you right click and press join a new frame, it will collect all of those together and we can move that box around and all of that will be moving at once. And that's our main system. So let's select all of this and press Shift D to duplicate it because we're going to create a secondary system for some bigger buildings. And now we've got that, we just connect our grid back up like we did before into the mesh of the distribute points on faces and the instance on points goes back to joint geometry. Now nothing's happened because it's just doing the same system on top, so it's sitting in the same place. But if we play around with the density, maybe bring that lower and increase the max size of these buildings on the Z axis, just so they're taller and then maybe bring the density down. I'm just going to play around with these settings till I get something I'm happy with. It will just add a few more taller buildings in to the mix, just so not everything is the same randomness. And you could keep duplicating this system three, four, five times to get really varying different levels of building sizes uh, within your scene. I'm just going to play around with the size and density max of the smaller buildings a little bit more just to make them smaller and more compact. And there we go. That's our main system in place. Now let's look at adding a road system. So let's add a plane into our main scene, size it up by five so it's the same size and let's call it roads just so we know what to refer to and move it out of your buildings collection because otherwise it will be trying to distribute that in the geometry node setup. For this, I'm just going to do this randomly. If we subdivide our plane, basically what I'm going to do is just delete loads of faces to create a sort of mask. And you can make this however you want to be. You can be way more detailed with what this looks like. I'm just using this as a demo purpose, but create some sort of mask that's going to be your road network. It can be whatever you want it to look like. That's fine for now, I think, for this purpose. And we'll add the city back in so we can see. And maybe just bring it up slightly on the Z axis just so it's not in line with our grid. And let's head back into our geometry node setup on our city. And we're basically going to create a raycast boolean system. I'm going to go through this quickly. So let's go. Add an object info node and select it to roads. Add a scale elements, a realize instances, a raycast node. And from the is hit, add a boolean not. And from the boolean not, add a math, subtract, and change this to minus 0.2. Five. That is our boolean function essentially right there. And if we join that together in a frame, make sure to change the Z value on the ray direction to 112. That number just seems to work well for me. And plug the boolean not into the selection of our instance on points on both of the systems that we've got, because remember we've got the smaller and the bigger buildings. And the subtract value into the selection on our distribute points on faces, again for both systems. And if we look now, you see nothing's actually really happening. And that's because we need to set our object info to relative so that wherever our plane is relative in the scene, it will update. And you can see that's it now. It's masking wherever we move this plane, wherever the geometry is, it's going to basically mask out uh, the geometry node setup that we've built. It really is that simple. I'm just going to change the color here so we can see it better. And there you go. We've got our procedural city system with some roads going to play around with the settings a bit more just to make the buildings a bit denser and that's basically it and you'll see the power of the system here if we select our roads mesh and let's say we just extrude one of the faces along here it's all dynamic so if we bring that out it will just mask out those buildings wherever the geometry hits so you can get really creative with this and it's a very non-destructive workflow you can keep adjusting and editing as you go on, you don't have to bake anything in, which is very nice. Now let's add a shader. So we're going to, in the shader editor, add a new texture and call it, I don't know, buildings. Make sure we apply it to both of our building models. And we're going to create a random material that would apply to the different buildings so they're not all the same. So let's add an object info node, a color ramp, connect the random to the factor, change this from linear to constant and connect the color to the base color. And here we go already. We're seeing that it's randomly applying one of the two colors to the buildings, depending on how relative that color is on that slider. So if we press the plus value here and we can add more colors like a blue in there. You can see 
That's looking good. Maybe add like a deeper bluish in there just to give you an idea on how this is working. And there we go. We're randomizing the color per building while still maintaining the same material so we can control it all from this one material, which is cool. But uh, if we want to change just the color of the roofs, we're going to do something very simple. We're just going to add a input geometry, a separate X, Y, Z, a mix shader node. And for the sake of example here, a diffuse BSDF shader, connect our principled and diffuse to the mix shader, connect the normal to the separate X, Y, Z and the Z value into the mix shader factor. And this will basically, uh, this is, uh, we need to flip these around. And there we go. So basically any face on the buildings that is facing directly to the Z normal, which is upwards, uh, will be replaced with our diffuse BSDF shader, which is our roof. And again, you can customize that even more if you want. Uh, but for the sake of example, you get the idea. And what's really great about the system is if we go back into the grid, no matter how much we size this grid up now, the system will always procedurally generate everything. It's not scale locked so you can just let's say 100 by 100 it becomes huge uh, but everything is still correctly scaled and you'll see that wherever we scale this road up to as well it will just continue to mask everything out um, you might need to make a bigger mesh for that but yeah and another cool thing is if we change this not boolean value to and and select boolean it will invert it so it will put wherever your mask is, the system will spawn onto instead of wherever it isn't. So you can get a bit creative with that and maybe not use it for this city, but it might be a good use for another project you've got in the books. So there we go, there's our procedural system. Very powerful, we can use the system in a lot of interesting ways. And in the next video, like I say, we'll go into more detail on how to customize the buildings, but hopefully this was a good example on how to create a very solid and powerful little city generator for you. To get started that's it thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed the video if you did please give the video a like and do consider subscribing for more content like this again please check the link in the description for the gumroad file for this project and with that i'll see you in the next video